Good evening and welcome back to Hank the Cowdog, The Case of the Vampire Bat by John R. Erickson. It was Friday night when we were both last both together and uh, Hank had just finished singing his song in the competition to try to get away from the coyotes and now in just a little bit the coyotes will be singing their song just trying to catch everyone up on uh, what's going on so now chapter 11 the vampire cat appears well i had put my whole heart and soul into the song and when I'd finished, I faced old Rip and snort, and I waited for a roar of applause. They stared. No applause. Well, is that all I get for doing the song of the year? The best song of the year. Not best song of year, said Snort. Only boring and stupid coyote not give hoot for skunk mother. Not best song of the year? <laughs> You'll have to admit that it's the melody was kind of nice. They shook their heads. Not have to admit. Coyote song much better and bestest. Yeah, but I haven't even heard your song yet. And it's illegal and uh, crooked to make judgments ahead of time before you've done the song. Who knows, you guys might forget the words and stumble on all the lyrics and don't forget who's the official judge of this contest. I didn't like the way they laughed at that last statement. It made me wonder if they were going to keep their word about making this an honest contest. Now, Mary D. Cat must have been having some thoughts because she looked at me and whispered, I don't think this is going to work, Harvey. Of course it is, and uh, will you stop calling me Harvey? She didn't have time to answer. Just then, Rip and Snort started warming up their tonsils and preparing for their big production, and they told me to sit down and shut up. And, well, I uh, considered a fairly reasonable request, considering who they were and all. So I sat down and shut my trap, and I listened <laughs> to their latest assault on good taste and music. It had a lot of rhythm and noise and no melody whatsoever. Pretty good kind of song for cannibals. In other words, because they didn't carry a tune anyway, well, let's see if I can explain what they did. They started laying down a basic rhythm of eight beats. Rumble, 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 rumble. Rumble, 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 rumble. Rumble, 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 mutter, mutter. Then Snort added the main vocals. <clears throat> Rip and Snort are toughest guys, singing songs and telling lies. Howl at moon and play all night. Love to eat and love to fight. Boom, 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 Sleep all day and not give a hoot. Coyote just a big galoot. Better not get in our way or I'll punch your lights out. It's the cannibal way, the cannibal way. It's a cannibal animal, full fan fanable cannibal way. When we see you in the dark, you know you cannot hide. We got eyes in front and eyes on the side. See, we see you, we hear you, we're coming on through the world's most famous wrecking crew. We smell pretty bad and we know we are cool because we learned our stuff at cannibal school. Bobcats, badgers, guard dogs, mutts, we clean their clocks and kick their shins. Boom, bum, bum, boom, bum, bum, boom, bum, bum, boom. It's the cannibal way, the cannibal way. It's the cannibal animal, faux fan fanable cannibal way. The brothers finished their little 
whatever it was. And you can call it a song if you'd wish. I call it noisy, tasteless piece of low-class coyote trash. Every bit as bad as the others I'd ever heard them sing through the years. They turned to me with big, sloppy grins on their face. Now, what hunk say? Well, it, uh, leaves me breathless. What that mean, dressless? <laughs> it means, well, I, uh, I guess you're waiting to hear the final opinion of our impartial uh, judge here, and here it is. I paused for a minute for dramatic effect and pretended to be giving the matter hmm, deep and serious thought, although I had uh, more or less already picked the winner. Okay, you guys, we got a winner. Stand by. Our big winner tonight is Hank the Cow Dog doing Ode to a Mother Skunk. No applause. Only blank stares. Uh, but you guys, you win the consolation prize on one week, all expensive paid vacation to the next canyon. Congratulations and start moving. Now, Kitty, these guys have been known to riot after a big defeat. Uh, we can begin edging northward, and uh, boys, it was fun. We really enjoyed it. But what really matters is not who wins or loses, but... In a flash, they had changed positions and were blocking our path. Snort was grinning. Oh, we really not matter. <laughs> we cheat and win. Then we have big coyote feast. Yeah, Snort, but that would be uh, cheating. And I know you wouldn't want to go down in the history and be known as just a couple of cheaters, so to speak. Oh, coyote not give hoot for, so to speak. Only give big hoot for yummy supper. Start with cat, and then we eat you, hunk. Oh, boy! <laughs> well, <laughs> Miss Kitty and I traded looks. She said, I didn't think it would work. <laughs> Quiet. I'm not through yet. I'm going to get a, it's going to get a little crazy here. Now, I just want you to follow my lead, so be prepared, all right? And be ready to run. I turned my back to snort. <clears throat> then I faced him. Okay, fine. Uh, now we know, uh, the truth about you guys. You cheat and can't be trusted, and I guess it's our tough luck. Oh, very tough. But before we proceed with this shameless travesty of justice, there's something you should know about this cat. Mmm, coyote eat cat in two bites, not give hoot for a shameful tapestry. Yeah, uh, well, you'd better hear me out and then let you make up your own minds. I mean, you guys are old enough now to start making up your own decisions about, well, life and setting a good example for our youth and our hunk get to point. Right. Uh, and here's the point. I left Mary D's side, walked over to the brothers, and whispered, Boys... Two nights ago, this cat was bitten by a vampire on the neck. There was a big moment of silence as the brothers stared with me with empty eyes. What means bitten by umpire? Not an umpire. <laughs> Snort. A vampire. Do you know about vampires? He shook his head. Coyote not play baseball, not give hoot for fun and games. Yeah, well, vampires aren't fun and games. I leaned forward, spoke in my spookiest voice. Vampires aren't fun and games. 
they rise up out of the graveyard in the deep dark of night and they go moaning around and crying in the night looking for victims. You know what they do? They bite their victims on the neck and inject them with a deadly vampire virus. And then they tear out the victim's throbbing gizzard and eat it raw. I studied uh, my audience. They were all ears and eyes. They were buying the story and I could tell and then snort <laughs> After doing all that, they turn their victims into little squeaking mouse. Oh, and one last thing about vampires. They hate cheaters. Snort spoke in a hoarse whisper. Hmm, coyote not crazy about meeting umpire. Yeah, well, you're fixing to meet one right now. Watch this. I turned to Mary D. and gave her a secret sign, a raised eyebrow. Then I closed my eyes and said the next part in the spookiest voice I could come up with. Seven slithering, slimy lizards. Spider webs and haunted house. Arise, O oh vampire, seek their gizzards, and turn them into a squeaking mouse. Now, you might remember that Mary D. Cad had shown signs of weirdness earlier in the day. In other words, she knew a thing or two about strange behavior, and she didn't get it out of a book. She knew it firsthand. And once she figured out what I was doing, oh, she played her part like a real pro. She rose slowly from the ground, kind of like a balloon being inflated. And then as she rose, her eyes got wider and wider. And remember those greenish yellow eyes, that cat eyes she had, the spookiest kind when you can see them in the dark, her eyes grew wider and wider. And you know how cat's eyes sometimes are black in the center? Well, that's the way they were. Two glowing cir circles of greenish yellow eyes with darkness in the center. She floated up to a standing position and then the middle of her back kept going up and making that kind of hump that cats make when they're mad or crazy. And she opened her mouth, showed her spiky little teeth, and cut loose with an eerie Now, sometimes when a cat goes through all that routine, it will cause a dog to become inflamed and want to start barking. But Mary D. was playing her part so well that it was kind of dark and spooky night anyways, and I had softened up the brothers with my vampire story. All of that put together took its toll on the morale of the cannibal army. Their ears shot straight up and their eyes grew as wide as saucers. I noticed that a strip of hair was beginning to rise on the back of their, both of their backs. <laughs> and fellers, they were watching every move she made and giving her their full attention. In other words, they were not showing any signs of inflammation, which was very good because if they had, we would have been finished and it appeared we had a chance of pulling this thing off. Well, Mary D. went on with the drama and rising slowly to her feet and humping her back and yelling, she locked her gaze on him and took a step toward him and hiss. It was very convincing and it caused the brothers to inch backward and then she moaned. The moon is full, the earth is turning, my vampire appetite is burning. Two coyote gizzards I must eat to make this dreadful night complete. Say, that 
did get their full attention, especially the part about the coyote gizzards. Rip and Snort. Rip looked at Snort. Snort looked at Rip. And then they turned to me. Uh, coyote not so hungry now. Maybe hunk better call off umpire and keep away from Rip and Snort. Sure, good idea. And I just want you guys to know you're right, Snort. I'd better get her under control before it's too late. I spoke to Kitty. Get back, vampire. Get back. Go away. Be gone. She turned and hissed at me. And by George, it sent a few shivers down my back all the way to my tail, even though I was part of the show. Hey, guys, I'm afraid it's too late. <laughs> Once she starts this vampire fits, well, she's out of control. All I can say is that if, if she comes after you with those deadly poison vampire fangs, you'd better run for your lives. Right on cue, she sprang at their direction. Oh, no, there she goes. She's out of control. The vampire's taking over. Run for your lives, boys. Protect your gizzards. There was a mad scramble and then silence. Total silence. Mary D. stood alone in the moon, moonlight. <laughs> we had pulled it off. Nice work, Kitty. Her head turned around very slowly. Hmm. She stared at me with those yellowish, greenish eyes. And my goodness, then she hissed. I am a vampire, and I want your gizzard! <gasps> well, I'm afraid that's all of tonight's story. You'll just have to come back tomorrow night to find out what's happened with Chapter 12. I am turned into a vampire. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, sorry I had to take the weekend off, but sometimes Hank's got stuff to do at his hacienda. But it was good to see you. Remember, you guys take care of each other while you can. Uh, love one another. Be kind and be safe. So, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Hank will be live for Chapter 12. I am turned into a vampire. This has been Hank the Cowdog, The Case of the Vampire Cat by John R. Erickson. Good night.